people, and welcome to another fine episode. Who's that anime? I got it right this time. Uh, with your host Steve and Colin, yeah. that's uh, and that's me. Uh, we're still um, journeying down the rabbit hole, which is Steinsgate. Um, yep. Boy, oh boy, it's it's going places and these next two places. Places not well. It's going places. It's, it's it's yeah. The the journey is beginning. Uh, I my my uh my question to you, Colin, because of course we we're going to be discussing uh, episodes nine and ten today. Uh, hmm. Is what is the name of episode nine for you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, on the Netflix, which on the Netflix probably won't have this ever again from. What I'm hearing. You know what? What do you mean? Well, they seem to be cutting down on the thing. Oh no! I better hurry up. Uh oh. Some of the some of my uh, downloads on the app has uh, expired apparently. Which ones? Uh, one to five, which is okay. We watched them. Shit, we've seen those. Thank God. Yeah, yeah. Need to get you those DVDs soon. <laughs> The DVDs, yeah, man. <laughs> uh, anyway, episode nine t- is titled "Homo Status of Illusions." Okay, and if I was to tell you, no, it's not. <laughs> you can tell me all that one, but that's not what uh, Netflix is telling me. <sighs> it says uh, "Chaos Theory: Homeostasis Part 2. No. Oh. No, homeostasis no, no. of illusions is what I watched. We, we tried. We tried. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wait until the episode so, ten. <laughs> this episode. Oh god. This episode starts off in the cat cafe, right? Yeah, I think they're just casually talking about uh, the time machine, because you know. Yeah. You know they know CERN doesn't like people having time machines, and they were trying to keep it under wraps, but. Well, they they don't they're not very secretive. No, they're really bad at hiding the fact that they have this world perspective shifting technology in their uh, rented apartment above a TV repair store. Yeah, I mean, literally, he always had the window open. You can hear him in the street. Uh. Just blatant out talking in front of some strangers who then had to be ratified as a uh, lab members because that makes it all legal because they, they don't sign the um, disclosure or anything. What do you call them things? Non disclosure agreement. Yeah. I mean, they could. Just... No, you're, you're right. They could just blab. They, they, could, they could just. I mean, it's like going to an interview at like, a game studio. It's like. Oh, we're going to be like showing all this shit, and uh... but you always sign in the disclosure saying, "Oh, I can't really say much about the thing." No, I have signed many a non-disclosure agreement in my time, uh, including one from my time at Rockstar, which forbade me to discuss anything I saw there for ten years. <laughs> <laughs> and how long has it been since you worked there? More than ten years. So you can now blab away. I can. It's nothing interesting. No. <laughs> Never is. <laughs> Never is. Um, Quite honestly, nothing that interesting. I I've signed I signed the Secrecy Act. Ooh. Because I, I worked in the post office. Oh man! So, what what uh what branch of the MI does that make you sort of allegiant to? Is that five, six, higher, lower? Well, obviously, lower. <laughs> the post office it's just government. Little body, I think. <laughs> MI one. MI one. Just, just MI. Common play. I'm pretty sure I had to take it for that. <laughs> what What does the secrecy act entail? Other than you know secrecy. I can't tell you. I'd have to kill you. Oh shit. I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember. It's violent. Po- Is that why the phrase "going postal" exists? Because. Uh, no. You know, the secrecy act entitles postal workers to murder. 
No, no. Well, they, they do. Some some postal workers seem to go on a murder rampage. It's it's true. It's I mean, true. they made, made two, uh, two to three games out of that. They they did they did. Uh, they're not good games. No oh, games. They are they are legit games. Uh, um, there was um, you know, they wouldn't be making end games these days. Like, well, actually, no. Uh, uh, Kickstarter's a thing. I don't know. Uh, yeah, but no, I mean, like, I was just thinking Steam fucking uh, games on Steam. What was his name? What was his name? The guy. Which guy? That direct the, the guy that directed the film of Postal, and Far Cry, and House of the Dead, and Alone in the Dark. Wait, they made and... films of those. Yes. Uh, uh, Far Cry. Uwe Ball. Uwe Ball. Uwe Ball. Is that the same guy yeah, as Resident the... Evil? No. Those were better. That was Paul W. S. Anderson. Yeah. And he did Monster World as well then. Uh, Monster Hunter. He yeah. Did. He did. And then the uh, it... uh let's see. Films. Filmography. Uh yeah, he did. House of the Dead, Alone in the Dark, Blood Rain. In the Name of the King, Blood Rain 2, Postal, Alone in the Dark 2, Far Cry, Rampage. Uh, oh, it did Rampage. Blood Rain, Blood Rain, not that Rampage, Blood Rain the Third Reich. Oh. Uh, in the Name of the King 2. Uh, and then Stop Doing Game Movies, I presume. I realised there was no money in it. Uh, less that, and that he was making utter dog shit. Oh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> he did, however, manage to get Christian Slater to star in the uh, Alone in the Dark movie. Oh, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Was it him, or you think it was, uh, he just needed a tax break? <laughs> well, there's three people in this. Christian Slater, Tara Reid, and Stephen Dorff, who were all probably... Desperately looking for work. Uh, Stephen Dorff. <clears throat> yeah, uh, uh, Deacon Frost from Blade. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah, that is a, a thing. Anyway, those movies are bad. Don't waste your time. They're bad. They're bad, bad, bad. Go watch them now. They're bad. <laughs> go, go and get them now. Well, they're hot. Um, <laughs> Not hot. So yeah, they are very bad at keeping secrets generally. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a complete inability to keep their voices down which of course uh, is how we end up with uh, Ferris who is like so, I understand you have a time machine. Yeah, <laughs> very much. And uh, then she's trying to use her womanly charms on uh, Okabe who's like, stop it, foul maiden! Yeah. And D Daru's not happy about it no, to the he... degree where he says, "I oh my god, I wish you were on fire so much right now." <laughs> Pretty much, he was like, <laughs> which is like quite a quite a an amount of hatred. Yeah. Um, uh, and then she go works on the uh, Daru, and Okabe's like, "Ha! Ah, you won't be able to break Daru as easily either." And then he just like spills his guts. So, yep, we could send text messages into the past using a thing called email. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh... He, uh, yeah, he, he is not uh, not difficult to convince. No. Not when there's a woman present. <laughs> no. Particularly Ferris. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's uh, so obsessed yeah. with her. Um, I don't think that breaks to the credits. Then draw. Mm -hmm. And then I think it's back to the big cafe where Maguri is leaving. Yes, her and uh, Ferris are having a discussion, oh. and Ferris is like, You did great today. Mm -hmm. uh, and Miyuri is like, Oh, uh, gonna cosplay, cosplay. Come, come to the lab sometime. 
Something like yeah. It's like, oh, I'm off to see Yuckabee. Oh, you're off to see Yuckabee? Is it true you guys have made a yeah. time machine or something? Yeah. And then she was like, yeah. She... Yep, totally do. Yeah. Definitely definitely can talk about it as the second member of the lab. Yep. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's something. To, to be fair, uh, I think it's this episode you find out that she's actually still in school. Is it? Yeah. Because I think that's the next thing is they're they're in the lab and they're sitting down and talking and uh, Dara's been Daru yeah. uh, and Okabe's like no, she's not cosplaying this is, she's just not changed out of school uniform I, You know, it, that did not click with me but you're right, that does that is what that is, yeah she's just not changed yet and I was like, yeah, okay yeah <laughs> I just left it at that. Yeah, and he's like, "Oh yeah, was, I don't know." She he states some form of like live action cosplay or something, or in live. <sighs> he calls it something stupid. It's still cos- calling it a cosplay, even though it's just her school uniform. Daru is a problem. Yes, he is a problem. Uh, and then. So then it's this did, point did here. Not... Oh yeah, go on. I think uh, Oak Bay goes, oh, let's go and hack into CERN again with our IB5100. And they go, what? No, he asks Daru how he's progressing with the uh, the decrypting the information they took. He's like, well, no further, because, you know, no no way to do that. I don't have an IB. <laughs> what are you talking about? What are you talking about? We totally got the thing. Yeah, uh, and then because I think this is where like because of course they all think he's mental mm. uh, as as is every time because in the previous obviously um this this is there's where he kind of links it to Moika's uh her email that was sent I think because that's the last episode right is her change no oh, sorry not not Moika's sorry uh, Ruk- Ruka's Ruka's, yeah, yeah, because Ruka, of course, sends the the pager email to their mother, asking them to eat more vegetables and so that they'll well, be born a girl instead of a boy. Yeah, instead of uh, yeah, meat, meat. Uh, while pregnant, while she's pregnant. Yep. Um. Uh, and this must be the what's what's changed essentially. Yeah. Um, oh, this that's why you think something won't. Yeah. And uh, of course, Christina then sort of, kind of, starts to put a bit of two and two together as to sort of what's happening with the, like the changes. They're mm-hmm. become like the further back they go, the more opportunity they have to to branch off to make larger change, yeah. over time. Yeah, doing the butterfly in, in a, effect. Yeah, quote unquote butterfly effect, <laughs> yeah. like that Ashton Kutcher movie. The butterfly effect. Well, I think that was coined from an actual theory. Oh, yeah, it was, it was. A butterfly flaps its wings and it creates a tsunami somewhere else. But yeah, the butterfly effect, there is an alternate ending to that movie that I, I thought was fucking mental. Um, I can imagine. Well, have you never watched it? I watched it when it came out in the cinema. Okay. And never again. I'm pretty sure the alternative, the alternate ending to that is him strangling himself in the womb with his umbilical cord, so that he's never born to make the changes. Uh, I mean, that's an ending. <laughs> it's it's very much an ending. <laughs> very much an ending. Um, I like this bit in the sense that this is the bit where okay, Okabe stands up to look in the corner of. Like the really small apartment that is the lab, yep. And look from side to side, going in this one spot. Where yep. is it? <laughs> it's like <laughs> you could have done that all over. The... It's like, <laughs> dude, you've been here for a while. Yeah. You could have looked over at this spot at any point. Yeah. And and and, and the IBN fifty one hundred is not difficult to miss. It's yeah. not a small piece of equipment. Yeah. So, the hell, man. Not yeah. very observant. Well, no, they obviously aren't since 
<laughs> if they were a bit more observant, I assume they'll be able to, you know, keep their mouth shut about the time machine to absolute strangers. I mean, yes, <laughs> yes, they should. Um. So I think he then contacts Ferris at this point to because uh, it was her dad who he contacts Ruka first. Oh yeah, and Ruka, Ruka says, "Oh." Yeah, I I spoke to my dad and he says that we did have one, but it got stolen, and we just don't know when. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was asked, and then so I think he then speaks to Ferris to see. Yeah, because it was Ferris's dad in the first place. It was Ferris who gave him the tip to talk to Ruka. In the first place, yeah, about the IBN fifty one hundred because it was, uh, well, I think we find out here that it was actually Ferris's dad's computer stuff that was stored at the shrine. Yeah, I don't think we know that until this episode. We know it's someone who it's it's a, a a person Ferris knows, but we don't know it's her dad. Yeah, uh, and just before he phones. One of the maids in the cat cafe go up to her and give her a question. It's like, oh, we've got these questions for next week's thing. And it's like, yeah. if you had a time machine, what would you go back and tell yourself? And Ferris goes, oh, nothing, really. Honest. That's, I wasn't really sure if that was sort of hinting at something or not, or if it was just sort of one of those serendipitous questions that were to come about at the same time as the actual opportunity to tell your past self something I think I think it was something like that it's just, uh, maybe just a bit, basically a foreshadowing of the episode yeah I, I think that's the thing is is like in, in shows like this it's often very difficult because there's a lot of implication and a lot of teasing of information uh, it can be really difficult to discern the difference between when it's just being sort of playful with like it's writing uh and sort of not heavily hinting that something is related to what's actually happening so i was like looking for hidden meaning in that conversation <laughs> that didn't exist <laughs> yeah was, the only meaning was the the foreshadowing of the question and she's saying oh i don't really know i don't think i would change anything type yep. thing and then he has the conversation, and then the next thing we know is uh, they're all Daru, Mayuri, and him are going to see Ferris or, or Stately Manor, as it were. Do, do they? Uh, do they not bump into Thingy Finger? Oh yeah, they see Shining Finger. Oh, well, he sees her and like runs after her, because I think Oka yeah. Okabe is having sort of like a a bit of a a breakdown. No, <laughs> uh, yeah. At this point, well, or is that no? Wait, that's the next episode. Sorry, but no, he no, is no, he is it, looking it, for. It happened is this, this one? Yeah, it happened this episode. Um, and. Did not was it last episode or was it this episode they bumped into her and Mayuri goes, Oh that's a uh, Moika. Yeah, and they're like, Oh no, we know. Like we've met her before. Oh how did how did you how did you meet her? You brought her to the lab. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like things have reset themselves to a degree. Yeah. Although is this the one where no, that's the the next one. Because he just bumps into her in the street and chases her to try and talk to her. And she's just her usual self, but I think in the next episode there's a. Oh no! No, no. it is this one. It's this like one. Cowering she's... in the corner, crying. Yeah, yeah. So he's walking on the street through the thing. They're doing uh, diary, and Mayuri's doing shopping. Mayuri points yep. out that there's a metal. Upa. Upa in the window, and he, and. Uh, Okabe goes, uh, no, don't don't look at me. I'm not buying this one. You just lose it again. And she says, oh? What? And he said, oh, never mind. Yeah. And then he hears the voice of IBM 5100 in Moika's voice. And then he goes, oh, what? And yep. she's like on the other side of the street. And then 
he tries to chase her and uh, finds her, I think, in the place where he speaks to everyone. That's, That's a good point. In the alleyway? Because he spoke yeah. to a uh, part-time girl there too. Yeah. Suzaha. Suzaha. In there as well. And Where she freaks out about the helicopter? Yeah. And the Christina. Uh, he speaks to her there too. At some points. That's like, weird. It's just location. It's probably, oh, we got this background. That's cool. We'll just use this again. I... I, I, I don't know. Like again, this is like where you have a show like this where it's really difficult to to have that separation between. No, this is just a thing, and there's some very deep connective tissue in this that we're trying to explain. <laughs> it's like, please, please read into this. I think it's just various famous spots in Aka, Akahara, Akahara, Akibara, Akibara, Akibara. Yeah, because it's all sent Akibara. Essentially. Yes, which comes into play in this episode. Very much so. Anyway, um, yeah, so she's uh, she's crying in the corner. Uh, and he goes, no, I don't have one now. Yeah, because she's asking if he knows where it is. Yeah. He's like, and nope. he's like, no, I lost it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't got it no more. Uh, yeah. And then... Then she just gets... like I think do Daru and, and Miuri catch up. And shout Okabe. Yeah. And she just, uh, Shining Fingers just stood up. Mocha's just stood up and is like, I, I'm gone now. Thanks. Bye. Yeah. She just kind of like sorts herself out and then rubbers the other two and walks away because yeah. she's that weird person like that. Anyway. Um, and then is this it, the one where Mayuri makes the comment? She's like, oh, she'd be great in cosplay. I need to get her into cosplay sometime. Yeah, because she's looking at her walk, climbing the stairs and stuff. So she's got a great Yeah, that's figure. what it is. She needs to be yes. really just going to cosplay. And, and uh, I think this is where Okabe is like, what? How do you guys know her? Because I think it's this episode, actually. Yeah, yeah. How do you, how do you guys know her? Oh, well, you brought her by the lab before. Uh, huh. Yeah. As well. Wow. Things have kind of reset in a way, because when she did her thing, she disappeared completely. Uh, mm -hmm. And then they get to the um, Ferris's uh, place, which is a penthouse suite on top of a high rise building, and they're like, What? <laughs> yep, some this, fancy schmancy place. This, this, this can't be her place, but no, it is. Yep, and then they're greeted by a butler at the top. <laughs> to which Darius, because the guy's like not rude, but just very prim and proper, and Darius, like, This is why they don't have butler cafes. Yeah, this is why they, they never take off. <laughs> And then uh, my ear was like, cool, a real butler. Nice. Uh, yeah. And then... <laughs> then Okabe has a complete meltdown. He's like, look, the people, they're like ants from up here. Yeah. <laughs> Just loses his mind. Yeah. God, he's such an arse. And uh, Dario's like, oh, crap, we're losing him. <laughs> Uh, Ferris came out, not in her maid uniform, and which is a point that they make. Um, yeah, Daru's very happy about having seen her now, not in maid uniform. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and she basically, I think she gets straight to the point, or like, so she wants to send an email back. Yep. And it, yeah, in exchange for like information on how to find the IBN 5100 yeah uh she will she would like to send a email and uh Daru's like yep send as many as you want cool yeah and I think Okabe has had a talk with Christina about the changes yep. that are happening yes I mean he's kind of yes. hesitant on it but everyone else is like yeah just go and do it guys because you know we we have no concept of what the fuck's happening. Yeah, of what the cha what's changing, yeah. except Okabe does. Yeah. He knows everything that's changing. Yeah. Um, is it? Is it this one? No. Mayuri comments to Christina that uh, she seems to be getting further away from Okabe. Or is that next episode? Or 
recruit for F Squad? Uh, oh, I, it's it's the comment where when he's not with you, he never seems further. He, he's never been further away. Like they talk about her keeping him tethered. Yeah. Um, I can't remember what the specific circumstance around that is, but I think it might be in the next episode because I have a feeling that it's it's linked to sort of the uh, conversation, like not linked directly, but like it happens around similar conversations between uh, Carissa and Okabe. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's that. The conversations take a, a bit of a more deep and meaningful turn um, in the next episode. Yeah, yeah, they do. Um, anyway, so <coughs> basically, Ferris is, goes, "Ah, oh, I want to send this mail," and he's like, "Cool, let me read it." No, can't read my no, can't read my D mail. Not not lying you to. And everyone's like, "Stop being a creep, dude! Can't be reading like girls' text emails." Uh, of course. Uh, do we no? Hmm. Hmm. This is this because we do find out. However, though we don't know what the message is going to say, we do find out about who she is. Yeah, because like basically, uh, it her name is her her real name is uh, Rumio Akiha. Yeah, uh, and it turns out basically like the reason she's in the fancy schmancy building is because everything in Akihabara is basically owned by her family. Mm-hmm. And the whole presence of Moe culture uh, in that area is all because of her. Like, yeah. Um, she's very which inf- I think, yeah, she's supposed to be quite influential. But I think Okabe sort of scoffs at that to a degree as well. Like, he's like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you may be rich, but yeah, I'm sure I'm sure it's not quite as, uh, quite as much as all that. Yeah, but she also states that she can't uh, avow a secrecy. To not like uh, tell yes. anyone because she doesn't want that to affect people's opinions of her. No, she doesn't want anyone at the cafe to know, so that you know people start treating her differently. She's just, uh, she's just Ferris. Yeah. Uh, which is interesting. That's right. Yeah. Um, uh, and then you get like the wee scene of Okabe being a complete or dick to Christina over the phone, who then. Right, 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 really hangs up on him like about 50 times. I love this scene so much. <laughs> I I love it because it is so he's such an arsehole. <laughs> and then by like completely, he's like, Oh, hello. Uh, could you, you know, please do this based on the instructions I have left for you there? It'd be so good of you. Thank you. Yeah. And it's like, oh, that's wow! I've never heard you talk like that. And then she just still gives him shit. Yeah. <laughs> he loses it again. Yeah. He's like, wow, well, thank you. I've done what he asked, and then you're t- telling me that I sound like a twelve-year-old boy. Thank you very much. Oh, <laughs> uh, a nightmare. Anyway, uh, so he sends the email. Well, yeah, no, like she's uh, actually uh, Ferris is reluctant to send it. She's like has her finger on the button, but then, ready to go. Yeah, and is like ah, uh, maybe I don't need to send this. And then he's like, okay, go. It's now or never. Yeah, very <laughs> much. Like okay, I guess, I guess I'll send it. Yeah, I guess. And then that's uh, another timeline jump back. Yep, the shit, the world line shift again. Yep. And uh, uh, Okabe Kao comes to his senses, and there's a man in the building that he wasn't there before. Yep. And it turns out to be uh, Ferris's father. Yep. Uh, and um, so, like, oh, your friends are cool, type thing. And your father seems pretty sweet. Uh, and yep. then Okabe asks about the 5100 and the father says oh I got rid of that ages ago yep it's, uh, speculation wise here uh, what what do we think that uh, 
what, what did we think Ferris's email was? Oh, uh, well, I can't speculate. I know. Ah, oh. I, my my gut tells me is that the 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 dad was dead. He was certainly and or, or not definitely not about. Um, yeah, and yeah, it, it seems it seems like the the email was very much a a message of warning to not do a certain thing that would lead down that path. I I, I immediately went to. It seems like it would be easier for it to be quite black and white, um, because uh, it, it's the the whole. It, it, well, we should probably say like obviously like we after they find out that the, the they no longer know where the IBN fifty one hundred is, mm-hmm. they they leave, um, and they basically like find that Akibara as it was is just completely gone. Because he's like trying to find direction and can't. He no longer can uh, orient himself within the I, the place. I don't think it's that. I think it's more as Mayuri goes. Oh, I need to go to Na- Namino. I don't know. She needs to go somewhere, which is a mu- like. She, and he's it's, like, "Why would you go there? That's like really far away." Yeah, uh, we got these things in this place, and then he looks around and then sees nothing. Everything's oh, that's what I mean, though. Is that, yeah, like everything is different because the anime and moi culture that was there is just gone. Because it's clear that Ferris did not have the time to 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 or the time or the drive to do that. She didn't. She didn't do what she'd done previously. And the only thing for me that made that that made sense, particularly in the scenario, obviously where her dad is then back in the apartment, is just like, well, he what he was never there in the first place, and that's why she sort of sunk herself into into the cafe and into the culture and making sure that everything was, you know, of a certain way. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it made me think, yeah, he's, he's he probably died of likely an accident or maybe a deal involving something where it went went Pardon. bad and. Uh, and yeah, like basically, his his then presence through her childhood meant that she never had that that drive or loneliness that led her to create all of that for herself. Yeah. Well, that's that's good speculation. I got, I'll find out. I'm sure. Oh, well, you will. Because <laughs> we're only just about halfway through the series. Yeah, yeah, we're getting there. Uh, uh, and shit's kind of getting real soon. Uh, well, especially the yeah. fact that he's just changed the whole Wakab- Akabara with his uh, the yeah. last email. Yeah, this is the first time that we've physically changed the geography. Like, the, the whole... like Previously, it's been, you know, people's meeting or their presence in certain social scenarios and things mm. like that. But in this instance, it was just... Nah, the whole whole place is different, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it ends at that point. Um, yeah, yeah, it ends at that because it is a special outro where it cuts to music yes. as he looks around and going, "Oh Running shit!" Running around like a lunatic. Yeah, Fucking, what have I done? <laughs> and kind of, oh shit, the musical. He's and, not happy, and he's also like. Um, has like a, I think before he realizes it's all changed, he makes a thought of like, can we even undo the changes yeah. that we've done? And then they go yes, and then this is where he realizes fucked up a a, a Kibara. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a really interesting. It's it's a bit of an inflection point because I think that um, at this point, or at least. Uh, he believes that the changes are so minuscule it doesn't matter, mm-hmm. and then of course there is that the the IBN fifty one hundred going missing is is big, but it's big in significance of what they need to do as opposed to it being a big thing generally for the world. Yeah, and the, yeah, and then this is the first time where it's like, no, that has literally altered the lives of millions potentially. So yeah, yeah, the changes can be significant. And like you say, probably not easily 
uh, undone, if able to be undone at all. Yeah. That's right, yeah. Uh, that's it. It's just let's get into the, the realms of how far can we go with this. Yeah. Also, in this episode, did he start meant trying to go with um try and send someone back in time? And then Christina just basically goes, Nope. We're not doing that because we already fucking know that it ends in uh, oh, jellification. Jellification mismatch. I think you're. I think. Well, I think he starts speculating that they should think about trying it. <clears throat> yeah. And then, but no, um, it can't be this one. No, because he has. I'm sure he does it twice. I'm sure he mentions it, uh, and then she just basically. He may do, but. She doesn't know anything about the jellification. She can't. But they seem to make a no. Oh, well, they do because they can get the emails. And it... but the but the emails the emails only hint towards the fact that there has been death. They don't speak to the specifics of the death. Yeah. So I don't know how they can intimate that that is. Well, they start doing what's that. What's happened? Because in the the IBN fifty one hundred is the reason they have the information to talk specifics about those deaths. So they shouldn't be able to. Yeah. This is where, where time travel things fail sometimes, man. <laughs> Either that or I'm just missing something. and I, well, I doubt it's an inconsistency. Well, I mean, it's probably... They did have access to emails. And they called human is dead, mismatch. And talk about the I jelly. Mean, unless they're... Jelly man. Does it talk about the jelly report. in the emails? I don't sure, think it does. It sure is jelly man report. I think it you many go have a look in. I don't know. I feel like it's uh if anything, it's probably like a a logical logical leap for them based on what's happening to the bananas. Yeah, and the fact that she's saying it's thirty six bytes of information that they can send. Yeah. Because it's about it's well, yeah, we find out there's there's a deal to do it's interesting because it, yeah, it's like sort of to do with compression, physical, biological compression. Yeah. And also, I think it also this one that they break down and say, oh, we don't really know how this is working. We don't know what our lifter is because it's not the microwave. Which also yes, that, makes yeah, confusion because right. they only know about the lifter thing because they hacked into CERN, essentially. Unless yeah. they've worked out themselves. Yeah, I mean, the timeline is different, so potentially they have managed to figure out yeah. Other parts of information. Or, oh, no, wait. Wait. He still remembers all this. Yeah, he still remembers it all, all. So, is it after he's already realized that the IBN 5100 is missing that this conversation happens? I think it might be. It might be at that point, yeah. Because he does, there is like a, cut, a cutaway where he realizes it and says that this is happening to him and then there's like a kind of a back and forth between him and Carissa uh -huh. around that so I wonder if like he's explained this is what happens we need this to like we have a thing that is causing this to work and it's not the microwave or the short the whatever wave uh there's something else that's assisting this yeah and it's in its ability to work and we don't know what it is and yeah, that's maybe that's what it is, and that's where they draw the parallels. That's probably the context that's missing. Yeah, I think so. Uh, anyway, so that's that's the end of the episode. How do you uh, how do you rate this one, Colin? Uh, I'm gonna go with an eight in the sense that it's pretty much average, but the ending mm -hmm. is what kind of makes it up because it's like oh shit he's fucked up properly this time yeah i also think that the whole phone conversation bit is really funny as well that uh oh yeah up a fair bit for me and also the bit where daru says that he wants to just him for okabe to be on fire is yeah. <laughs> brutal <laughs> for no reason uh, you know, <clears throat> he's uh very precious against various like he getting any time 
with Ferris at all. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, I, I know that. <clears throat> excuse me. I know that this is a, an audio medium, but and you can see in the video my new my new cushion. Oh yeah, see that soon. Oh. See, oh wow, it says see you, carry space power bar. Yep. On the bottom though. Yeah, it's a super weird position, but I think it's just because of the way the print is done. Yeah. Eh. The uh, the cushion itself is nice enough, so it's pretty cool. That was um. Yeah. It's not going to be too long until you see that on the way I'm releasing things, because it. No. Did lane there. Um, and I did the uh, bubble up like soda pop. The world's bubble up like soda pop. Last week. Uh, next week we should I think it's the start of, is it Cowboy Bebop? It might actually be the start of Cowboy Bebop, yeah. Because this is season 7, isn't it? Yes, so Cowboy Bebop was season 5, School Days was season 6. Yeah, so it'll be Cowboy Bebop. Yep. And then Folk And Martin. also Got oh, yeah. it, Helsing Deluxe Edition. Book of Helsing. Guy. Fucking big, man. Oh, uh, hold up there so you can see the inside. Like, the the side of it. No, no, not like the in, inside, the inside, but like, on the top. The top of it. Yeah, it looks like it's got two bindings in there. Oh, it's got a bookmark. Oh, is that a bookmark? Yeah. Ah, Look. we ribbon. Oh. oh, you're halfway through it already. No, I, I haven't. I haven't started it yet. It's just where it goes when you get it. Yeah, I was looking into um, <clears throat> finish off uh, Battle Angel Alita uh, volumes. I will, I've only got three at the moment, and there's nine. Ah, uh, oh them, wow! I got them hardback. And it's twenty five quid. <sighs> wow. Or I can, I, or I can just buy like the full set for one hundred and fifty. And then sell three. Sell of them. the other three. Yeah. I, I mean, it would be worth having the thing you like. That's that's kind of what I've arrived at the decision of is that I really want. I, well, I don't know if I like Monster. From what I've read of it so far, I really like Monster, so that's cool. Okay. Uh, I know I like Helsing, so it's only three books, so I think I'm okay mm -hmm. to go into that. And I'm collecting the Gantz books as they come out now. <laughs> so they'll just keep happening. <laughs> yeah. I, was, um... I think how many am I on now? Five. Five of... There's like eight available right now and I've got five. Oh. Yeah, I, I was enjoying it. That's for sure. The Battle Angel Elite stuff. Um, I mean, I originally watched the the manga one that came out in the nineties. Mm hmm Um I watched the live action and I was like Oh, it's actually based on a big manga. <laughs> live action was actually not bad. I liked it. I think it was the best anime live action thing I watched. But other people claim that the pacing's all wrong. I mean, it's difficult to get the pacing of a nine volume manga uh, into a two-hour film. Well, it wasn't nine volumes. It wasn't all of it. Oh, no! Oh, really? No, that's not oh, the end okay. of it. That's like the first. I two volumes, three volumes. Ah, okay. I have like fleeting knowledge of uh, Alita, so I don't. I don't really know that much about it, to be honest. Well, that's that's fair. I mean, um, essentially, the manga version was even shorter than. The movie version, uh, the the two OV, two OVs that they had. Mhm. Mm um. And that, uh, and the movie added in a lot of extra, like the the actual speedball game thing that they play mm -hmm. was, you know, the rollerball speedball deadly thing was actually in the the books, but they've never actually mentioned in the manga, uh, the anime. Okay. Uh, Interesting. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, but it's, it's, so there's more. There's a lot more for the to put out there. No, I have. Uh, those are the ones that I, I think I, I have in my mind. The other ones I want to get, like the other books, because I, I, I liked reading Attack on Titan more than I enjoyed watching it. But I probably think I think I'm going to go back and watch it now that it's done. Is so, that, is it actually done, done? I think the last episode's now aired. So finally aired. It's um, only took a year and a half. Yeah. yeah. I'll I'll probably watch that at some point. I want to get uh the black editions of um Death Note. All right. What's the difference? It's it, uh, it well they're just they're just the books, but their the pages are black edged. All right, okay. So they don't have the the white edges. It's 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 not really much of a special edition. They just look quite good. Um and then I'm going to continue collecting everything Junji Ito related because it's all fucking great. That's fine. That's all for it's, you. It's, it's fucking wacky. That's your style, man. It's horror stuff. The interesting thing, I think, about Junji Ito is he seems like a totally chill, happy guy who likes cats. <laughs> and yet, that's the stuff he draws. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's how it goes, man. Yeah, somebody had compared them to uh, like Miyazaki, who creates these like beautiful painterly scapes, and you know these gorgeous like happy characters, and is just a miserable man who hates everything and his own work. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You know, you got to put these things to some in some creative way, man. There's a there's a really good uh, Miyazaki quote. I wish I could remember exactly what it is. It's is it is it this? Uh, hang on. Uh, shit. I don't know. I there, there's something like I. It could just be uh uh total nonsense. But there's like a quote where he's talking about some days I have good days and other days I feel very stupid. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, oh, okay. You know, don't be don't be too hard on yourself. This is where it's just lost in translation. <laughs> Potentially. I think it's uh, it, it was just explaining how it's difficult some days to get work done because you just don't like what you do. Yeah. Which I, I kinda get. I kinda get that. Yeah. Um I will uh use this opportunity then while we're in the middle of the episodes. Mm -hmm. My brother messaged me the other day. Uh -huh. uh, with a podcast recommendation, all right, uh, of a of a BBC Radio Four podcast called Uncanny. Oh, okay. And it is, I'll read the read the thing from ghostly phantoms to UFOs. The Battersea poltergeist Danny Robbins investigates real life stories of paranormal encounters. All right, and it's good. It's real good. Is it good? Yeah. Like, there's no way any of the stuff in it's real. The <laughs> stories are fantastic. All right. Uh-oh. Oh. oh, I've just reopened up my uh, Netflix app on the phone. Oh, no. And the uh, episode list is updated now to say they're all expired. Oh, no. Oh no! Shit. Oh well, that's good. I can talk to talk about all these ones that we've done now. I'll get it. Cool. I'll get it. In, in which case, I, I suppose on to episode ten. <laughs> yeah. What is the what is episode ten called, Colin? Uh, whole status of compliments. Okay, so not Chaos Theory, Homeostasis 3. No, Homeostasis <laughs> of Compliments. Why would it be part three? I, I don't know. The, the last, this is the culmination of the three-parter that has had nothing to do with each other. <laughs> <laughs> well, they've had something to do with each other, but still. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is uh, like obviously... The start of this episode is where he's back in the lab, right? And he's just having a bit of a... 
bit of a hard time. <laughs> uh, or am I misremembering? Oh, I think. Or are they still roaming the streets, going, "Holy shit, where's all this stuff?" <laughs> I, yeah, I think he's in the street at that point, going, "Oh, it's it's all kind of changed," and then he starts asking questions about how they met first, if. Because he, he goes, he even goes to the May Cafe, and that's not there. That's right. Yes. How did we meet Ferris? And that's... It was... Someone was supposed to play Ferris at that game. Yeah, the game that... Uh, the card game that was, was doing this. Um, and it was Daru. He was meant to play, but he got food poisoning. But he was sick. Yes. And so, Maori and uh, Okabe stepped Okabe. in. And they were shit, but they managed to like talk to her. Well, the girls have been fr- the girls have been friends ever since. Yeah, I think is what he said. Yeah, and he says, uh, "I say he says something like can't can't say I'm can't say it, complain about the scenery or something horrible like that." <laughs> <laughs> something like that. He's basically like, "Ah, oh, well, you know, it's cool. We've now been friends ever since." and and um, Okabe is like, oh, I'm not surprised you lost. Or something. Yep. Something was like, um, I think that's it. And he just basically went around and went, oh, shit, it's not here. What have I done? And then yeah. cuts to the intro. And then the next thing I think you see him is talking to Susia outside the store. Or just, does, does he talk to him? That. No, first we have the awkwardness. The awkwardness. Yes, the awkwardness. Okay, go on then. Uh so No. This is the awkward no. yeah, The awkwardness is the start of the episode. No. It it super is, no? No, because this is where they find out with the lifter. No, that's that's not in this episode. That's the next episode. Well, that's the next episode. Sorry, then maybe it's not. It's no. That involves that involves Suzaha taking her shirt off, finding out about the lifter. It does. Yeah. That's episode eleven. Uh this is the bit where they're all in the lab, and. They're dis- and as with anime, they're discussing about going to the beach, because that's what you do. Oh, and uh, and and uh, <laughs> Mayuri's like, yeah, you should you should go to the beach. Uh, and then it's like, oh, and and uh, you know, you can all come too. And uh, Christina's like, oh, uh, I'm fine to go as long as like it's a girl's trip. Yeah, don't want to take those. And pearls. then uh. Yeah, and then it's like, well, uh, Okabe says something like, uh, well, if it'll just be you two. And then it's like, what What are you talking about? Uh, what about Ruka? I'm like, well, you know. It's a dude. That's a guy. It's a dude. <laughs> it's like, what are you talking about? And uh, like, they get really mad at him, and he's like, I'm not. I just. I'm just trying to state, say that state the facts. Like, yeah, like because you know, he's he's a guy, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm, you're awful. I expect this of Daru, but not you. Yeah, well, <laughs> something like that. Oh. That that might not be some equally terrible thing oh, that's, that happens, but that's in the last episode we'll talk about. Yeah. Is that in the last episode that that is uttered? <laughs> it's because that's the bit where he. he uh, Basically runs back to the lab. Um, oh no, that's the next episode. It's another episode. It's, it, it, yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, but yeah. then uh, he's like, you know, I'm not trying to be difficult here. Like, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm like causing offense or something. And Ruka's like, no it's okay like if that's how you think of me i think i need to go and then he's like no you don't and <laughs> grabs their arm and it's like because you know this could simply be figured out by me 
just pointing out that you have a penis, right? And not pointing it out, but going for a full-on grab. Good old full-on grope. And and then it just like holds there, and him going, "Oh, oh no, <laughs> no, oh, no, no." no. <laughs> it's like, oh, it appears that Ruka's email demail has definitely worked, uh, and I'm in trouble. Yeah. Um, because uh, and that that yeah that that's when he sees Suzaha because he comes like crawling out of the front door. Well, yeah, it was, uh, um, Christina whacks him with a. A big thick book. A book, that's right. It's like big, about, about as thick as your Helsing book. Yep. It uh, like, looks like a gives harp. him a good old smack with a book of this size. Yeah. And blacks clobbered out. him. Blacks out, and I think he gets Dar. Even Dar is there. Well, and he's like, "What the hell, yeah, Dar is there?" I I wouldn't do that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I. Oh my god! I was watching that. I was like, I hate this. I hate this. I hate. I hate what you're doing. I hate it. Stop. <laughs> Stop being that person. Yeah. Be subtle. Be subtle in your inquisition. You knew something could have changed, and yet for some reason, your subtlety is non-existent. She has no subtlety. We discussed uh, that last time, um, like earlier. Nobody has any subtlety. It's crazy. Yeah. Um. So. He, he comes crawling out the front, and she's like, "Oh shit, happened to you?" And he's like, "Ah, uh, I, you know, I feel like I've been tortured. Made a mistake. Yeah, I've been tortured. She made me like sit on my haunches for thirty minutes or whatever." Yeah, I was a, uh, <laughs> um, it was. She said, "Oh, I bet you that was a uh, that uh, Carissa, what's her name?" Yep. Uh, and he was, "Oh yeah, you're right. She's made me." I think I thought someone sat him on him for an hour. Oh, I I I thought he had, like had to sit prone. <laughs> I think so, yeah. So, so, for a length of time. Yeah. And she says, Oh, is that the torture? Oh, that's nothing. And he's like, yeah, I'm worried that, that, torture. that you seem to be a personal experience of this. <laughs> so well, you know, I've been around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh and then um, they get into a bit, they, they end up like having a sit down, of course, and like getting into a bit of a deep and meaningful, um, which is unusual for Suzaha generally because their char- her character is normally so blasé about everything, mm-hmm. other than the occasional panic about helicopters. Yeah. Um, but I did notice in this uh-huh. episode that because they're sitting on a bench, right? Yeah. And he's just kind of like, uh, yeah. looking up to the sky, dying. And she's just chilling out, enjoying the sun. Um, I think there's a helicopter noise goes above as they're sitting there, and she doesn't react. Yeah, well, I think that's mainly because I think he said, "Oh, uh, in any, that's not what you think it is. It's just a news helicopter." I think she's maybe like, "No, no," but she doesn't. She doesn't even do anything though. She doesn't even like react to the noise of it. It's really weird. Uh, but of course, it could have changed, because everything's changed. Everything's changed. <laughs> yeah, so she's basically... He would remember, of course, the interaction where she freaked out about the news helicopter. Yeah, but I think... There's also something that's changed. Um, yeah. Or she's just kind of like, oh, you know, you're right, I'm back in the, in the past, and it's all different here or um, it's weird it's uh yeah I might let there's, there's something to it though that bothers me because ah. that's that's a it's a that's a a direct contrast that for me as a person who's not that observant still noticed yeah it's it's possible that uh she's just you know gotten used to the helicopters flying over all the time my my wonder was is that if it was just supposed to be like not a, like a, a key piece of information, but it was just supposed to be like an extra little bit of you can you something is different. Like this, the 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 far reaching changes that have happened have affected Suzaha as well. Like maybe not in like as much of a significant way, but in our way. 
Yeah. So. Maybe. Because she does go on about saying, oh, today's a good day for a cycle. Yeah. Uh, to ride the bike. Yeah, well, that's that's what they, that's what they get to. Because, of course, like, she's... She explains to uh, Okabe that the whole reason she's in Tokyo at all uh, is because she's looking to find her father. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh... Did he did he leave or whatever? It's like no, I just haven't seen him in a long time. Yeah, it's like kind of weird. Uh, and then she talks about the fact that you know, uh, I have a chance to meet him. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the last chance. The last chance, and it's like, oh, okay, and. <sighs> So again, my mind is is going a bit here because, of course, I've long suspected that she has more to do. She like obviously has more information on certain things. She remembers some mm. things. Yeah, yeah. But I think like that we're in a circumstance here where, depending on who's making the change, other changes will happen to even people who remember the things that are happening. So, uh, it gets a bit weird and muddy. Hence the helicopter thing. Yeah, but. My my kind of gut on this, I'm almost certain, almost certain that uh, her dad is probably maybe the victim of suicide or something like that was my kind of immediate reaction huh. because she was super specific or maybe like some sort of accident. Yeah. But she was like, you know... I I can I have one chance to see him at this point. <laughs> you're like, oh, so either to stop him to do like likely to stop him from doing a thing. Because um, uh-huh. if you if you don't see him, then of course it's too late. Um, and it, it it sort of made me wonder like about her place in this because it seems like I we we get onto this later, but there's like clearly the idea that she she seems to have some experience of the future one way or another oh yeah whether that has been a d-mail itself that even okabe doesn't remember or something grander than that that has allowed her more knowledge yeah um because it particularly around like she made some comments about uh christina as well originally like you know mm-hmm. don't like her yeah uh, well they... uh, do, do you know her not really but she's gonna do some stuff. You should watch out for her. Yeah, yeah, she certainly has uh, mentioned some things to Okabe about that, and Scott scowled at her. Uh, yeah, well, that's uh, that, she scowls at her, and then she uh, Christina goes up to the lab, and then they have that conversation, a little bit of an exchange, uh, where he's she says not to trust her. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it's at this point when because she the cycle and they go to that location. That that, to have yeah, sorry, that's that's where they have that conversation because they cycle where she's like, it's, "We should go for a cycle," and then it's <laughs> him cycling with her on the back. He's like, "I assumed you maybe had two bikes." Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh man, it's, it just brings me back of uh, um, melancholy and Sizamia. <laughs> yes, yes, God, it does, it oh, really does. I thought you had two bikes. She's standing on the back, or holding his shoulders. Oh, well, she's not even like just sitting on the <laughs> she back. Um, she's not, she's not being very helpful. No, <laughs> uh, well, I don't know. I think that may be a bit more helpful. A bit more center balance eh. rather than having Maybe. your legs on one side. Um, so they're having the conversation. She's going to see the dad uh, tonight, and he yep. goes, Right, if you don't see the dad type thing, then, or if you do, come back to the lab and we'll do some stuff type thing. And yep. she's, she's like, You know, for a mad scientist, you're not that bad. And this is where he started to change to be a, a bit more likable. 
in a sense. Yeah. More concerned. I, definitely more human. Yeah. Uh, it is the first time, I think, or one of the first times, because I think most of his conversations with Mayuri tend to have a little more grounded yeah. uh, you know, content. Uh, but this is the first time he's talked to someone else like this and Although, well, not the first time. It's another glimpse into it because he has, there's a little moment at the 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 dry cleaners with Christina as well, mm-hmm. where it gets a bit more human and and open. Yeah, uh, I think like there's definitely glimpses of sort of. It feels like for his character that there's just there was a a, a point where this persona became kind of a a defense mechanism yeah us uh more than anything else because like i can't see uh miuri finding (laughs) that person that interesting so more like she tolerates that and the knowledge that he was he is different or can be different um yeah it's weird i think that's the same for it's really weird very well um so so she goes off to do the thing, and then he's. Is it next episode that he goes up to the roof and sees Krista have an argument on the phone? I want to say yes. Yeah. Okay. We'll go with that. Hey. Anyway, so he. he... Y- 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 uh... Yeah. Yeah. It is. I don't think they fit into this one. So he goes yeah. back and he's kind of organizing a, a meal for Sousa yep. in this one. They kind of go, yo, come back whenever and makes her an honorable member of the lab again. Another one. Yep. Uh, and then he sends a message to Daru saying that Ferris is making the home cooked meal for him. <laughs> and it's like, that's... Is that this one? Yeah, yeah, because he needs to, he get, tries to get Dara back because Dara's out with his, uh, his, another group of friends. Yes, because uh, uh, yeah, because essentially the whole thing here is is that regardless of because uh, Okabe says to Suzuha, it's like you know, uh, I want you to promise me no matter what happens, you're going to come back to the lab thing, and yeah, yeah we're going to celebrate one way or another. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's what he does. Um, and then... So he does that. Uh, and he tells Dara to come back. And then... Does he go shopping with... Uh, Miyazaki? Uh, Carissa? At this point? Uh, no. Yes. No. No? No, I think that's next episode. Oh, no. Or later, another part, because... Well, the the, the, the uh, this is the bit where he receives the, the stuff uh, that you sent to me. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is this the way he receives that? Yeah, it must be, yeah. So they are, they are out shopping. But he's with yeah, because uh, he's, he's out. They are out shopping, and he gets the. He's he's, he's with the. Uh, uh, he's with. Oh no, he's with Miuri. Miuri That's the, who he is this with. Time. And, but he's in the lab, and he gets it, and it's basically, we're watching you, and then sends a very threatening picture, of a plate of jelly slash jello. Yeah, which you also sent to me. Yes. Well, not the exact same picture, but. <laughs> no. No. But. Uh, a very threatening message. And Nonetheless, then, you're correct, yeah. But I don't think was Dara out at that point. Because uh, he gets that. Dara was already gone. Yeah. So he gets that message. It's the next episode that Dara comes in and goes, ah, shit. I, I thought as much. And then looks at the lab uh, computer. It- it might be. Uh, yeah. I don't think there's any recognition. He doesn't tell anyone about what's happened. 
No. There's no recognition of this he's, at all in this he's, episode. He's taking it on as himself in this one. So, so yeah, he, he does go out shopping with Miuri and uh, uh, and then they get talking about um, when he w- uh, she remembers when he was a kid that he was really sick. Yeah. Yeah, so the drop that he was really sick when he, he was a kid. He got all dizzy and stuff. And yeah, and he was gonna, he had a fever that would not come down. Yeah, at all. And he or she wished on a shooting star, three times, for him yeah. not to, uh, for him to recover essentially, and says, "See, I saved you that time," and he then he just does a dick move. It's like, no, not really. It was my Stein here or something like, like that. Is it? Yeah, it was his Steiner ability. Yeah, his reading Steiner. Uh, I think like. I don't know what I hate more about that. It's like, it's it's a chance for him to be that human that he clearly can be. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think, and I don't think it's the disappointment I have that he does that because that's just kind of who he is. Yeah, it's the disappointment that Muri is so willing to just go. Oh, I guess not. Yeah, and like I, it's like, you know, I I would have settled for, well, agree to disagree. Yeah. <laughs> I just there's something because I I don't know what it is. Uh, something tells me that there's like she did have something to do with it. Weirdly, mm-hmm. I I don't know what uh, or how in any way, but there's definitely we don't know a lot about them as kids. Mm-hmm. Oh. Um. And yeah, we don't know a lot about them as kids. We don't know anything about her family. Although I'm sure she does reference them in a, a couple of occasions. Mm-hmm. There's certainly uh, a gravestone scene. It flashes yes. up. Yes. Uh, yes. And I think that's just because she's like, oh, look, the stars are out now. And it's like, ah, that's, that's actually Venus. And he says that in a humane way. Yeah, than, no, 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 that's oh, right. That's not a star. That's Venus. Bah. Doesn't do it like that. Yeah. That's not how he does it. Um, and then they get back to the party. Uh, Carissa is making apple, some sort of apple pie. An apple pie of some sort, yeah. Which smells yeah. revolting. And they're like, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> what are you making? It's like, oh yeah, I'm just making <laughs> this stuff. And Rick is there. Yep. Because uh, yep. I think Chris, Chris has uh, asked for a uh, Ask for a boiled egg or something. And uh, my ear is, oh, I'll just stick it in the microwave. And Ruka goes, no, no, no that's going to explode. And the worst thing is, we've never really covered it, but like way back when he was showing off to uh, Shining Finger. Uh huh. Episode four or something. And he's like, so this is the time machine. And he goes on dramatic flare and does stuff and then snaps the door off the microwave. That's right. Uh, we never really explained to, um, you know, state. Oh, you know, that's probably not a good thing. But yeah, don't, you know, don't turn you... that shit on while the door's open. Yeah, uh, with the door off, all that fucking microwave and shit just bouncing around in the room. Yeah, yeah that's good. <laughs> all that microwave radiation that is now leaking into the room. Yeah. Whoops. Very much. Um, yeah, so that's that. Uh, but, party. but of course, he so they're preparing, they're about to, they're starting, they're waiting, I think, mm-hmm. for Suzaha to turn up. Yeah, and he gets a, a message from her just saying bye. Yeah, oh, and he was going to that's... tell her that was what was going to happen. Oh, that's yeah. He, that's right. Before they left at all, For the uh, he was like, "I'm going to go and do that," and they're like, "No, you're fucking not. <laughs> don't be a fucking creep. <laughs> don't don't be a creep. You're ruining this girl's moment with her dad." Yeah. Uh, and he's like, "Oh, okay. I guess. I guess I won't then." Uh, and then, and then, yeah, he gets that message that says, "Yeah, bye." 
Yeah, so then um, so I sent the email to uh, Born to Fall. So no matter what you do, follow her. Yep. It's, it, yeah, convincing uh, himself. Yeah. It sends a email to himself, ordering him to convince her to, like, you know, fucking come to this party and hang about in Tokyo, please. Uh, something like that, yeah. Uh, Daru appears going, oh, I'm here <laughs> first, and uh, as instantaneously disappointed, he's like, you bastard. My time yep. traveling group. Although, yeah, that's right. It's the time traveling group, and he's like, sorry, what? Who are you talking to? Oh, yeah, he's yeah, a, my time traveling group. I'm a moderator on the forum, and uh, they had a guest speaker. Yeah. Um, yeah. She should also state that she was looking at our uh, badge thing that she had, and that's her only memory of her dad. I think she mentions that there, maybe. I could have been spoilers. Uh, Suzuma. Their badge. Oh, yeah, she, yeah, that's right. Yeah, the badge. I forgot about that. Um, so, once he's changed the past to follow her. Um, oh, that's the next episode. Is that the next episode? Is that where it ends? Yeah. I think it ends there. Because this is, this is where... Because the next episode picks up like nothing's happened. We'll get to that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, yeah. Because I'm pretty sure the next episodes where we get into the lifter and like potential other ways to communicate with the past. Yeah. Yeah. Spoilers for the next episode. The next one, yeah. I think you're right. Uh, uh yep. Yeah, it's moving That's on. It. It's definitely moving on. It it's starting to gather a bit of speed, I think. Mm-hmm. I think it it's interesting because like one of my, my bigger complaints about Haruhi was that it started out at a real clip <laughs> and then started dragging. Um, this this started out a little bit slower, yeah, and is now really starting to to pick up the pace a bit now. Yeah, yeah, it is it's uh, it's certainly um, it's going to get there. It's going to get there. I'm gonna do it. Yeah, it's gonna happen. Yeah, it's going to go all weird. It's be amazing. Um. How'd you like this one? I suppose it's setting the setting up the rest of the anime. It's like building on mm-hmm. Susan Mio's character. She's now yep. advised that she hasn't seen anyone as for the, the father figure type thing. Mm-hmm. And she's not going to be there much longer. Uh, so, and there's some good scenes, some awkward scenes, like you said, like, oh god, the start, so fucking awkward. But he gets a good beating for it, so he does. He gets what he deserves. Better, uh, better, what he got in the second episode, which was nothing. <laughs> nothing. Uh, yeah, and he's mellowing out a lot. We're, we're definitely seeing a lot more of uh, like uh, past the veneer. Yeah. Like there's a like I I think it's obvious this is all an act but I think we don't know what's underneath the the act until more recently like we're starting to see like quite a conscientious person um who clearly has like has a level of empathy for different people and uh and yet chooses to hide that on a regular basis yeah it's weird yeah oh oh, it is but it's, it's crazy like um 
Oh, I think I'll, I think I'll, I'll, it slowed down a bit in that sense, but speed up. So I, I'd want to go with a seven. I think it was Barnley in seven again. Uh, two and I, I think this is an eight. I think it's an eight. Okay. Okay. It's it. It's not as funny as the the previous one. No. But I thought a lot of the scene, the, the scenes between Suzaha and and uh, Okabe were really good, and like the kind of seeing Okabe be a little more sort of being able to be kept in line by the <laughs> others was quite interesting as well. And yeah, he's he's willing to be yeah, kept in line. Uh, yeah, and and the glimpse of the past I think is fascinating as well because it's the first time we've ever really talked about uh, Kokomi's past. Him, yeah, before he was, he's who he is now. Yeah, I think that's interesting. Uh, and then he had um, he had the threatening te- text message. Yep, and he, and picture of Jello. <laughs> yeah, where she doesn't even like go to his phone and pretend he's talking to like some invisible voice in his head on that one. That actually, I think that's quite telling, because like every other circumstance, like you say, is like, oh well, you know, that's them. Yeah, they're here the organization. They're fucking with me again. Yeah, the organization are, are coming in. They're swooping in to make the changes, and like, it's obvious that that's just like again some form of coping mechanism that he uses to just deal when things are not going his way. <laughs> uh as Daru has hinted, it's like, does it count if he's not actually on his phone if you're telling him not to be using his phone <laughs> and he's not talking to anyone? Yeah, um, it's all in his head. But yeah, you're right. Like, the absence of him doing that, it like, it, I think it conveys the ser- like the severity of the situation because yeah. it, he does that because he's in control of it. Like Even if he's not getting his way, it's not dangerous it's not you know a problem it's just frustrating but like there's a real element of potential worry and and fear that this message has caused and yeah it's like nah i'm not going to do that because uh i'm scared <laughs> yeah well it was um it was a uh, when they, they first hack into cern and they get all the pictures of the jello and he's like once again, it was in the supermarket. He was phasing out in the supermarket. He looked at the jello. I was like, oh yep. shit, I just told Muriel this. I shouldn't have done that. Yep. And then he's got the message. And, and it, yep. And, and you, But you're right again. That's like another scenario where it got a little too real for him to yeah. to do anything about. To laugh off, um, essentially. Yeah, I, I, I think that's interesting. I think it is difficult to remember. Like, There's a lot of... Uh, a lot of comedy, a lot of uh, kind of high level ridiculousness about Steins Gate, mm-hmm. but this show starts off with a murder. It does like I had to remind myself of that. It starts off with the murder of one of the main characters. It starts off with a murder of a character, yeah, that I am now, you know, kind of invested in. Yeah. So, I, like, and and the further we're getting through it, like you say, is like I'm starting to think. Oh, when are we going to get round to figuring out how this is starting to tumble down? Because this doesn't seem good. Or, like, have we already changed it enough that that's not how it happens? Yeah. Yes. Well, obviously... Because obviously, like, the first change, it changed it in the first place. Yeah, literally changed in the first the first change when he told, like, there was a murder. And then it was, yep. didn't happen. And then yep, she phased phased out in the middle of the street. Yeah, and she's uh, with been with them past the point that she's died. Yep. He, so yeah, it's it's uh, just mild. It's interesting. Just mild uh, sexual abuse. Oh. I mean, what? It's no worse than what he did to Ruka. So it's it's lo- obviously it's less. Worse, I mean, he he went yep. went right, right there with. He did. Ruka. He did. He went right for it. Right for it. <laughs> well, well, no, he did actually. Have, fair, did he not grope the, the breast? But then he, she always grabbed her by the chest. But she's, she's. I think she's supposed to be relatively flat chested as a character. So yeah, I don't know if that was a dead giveaway. I think that was, that was kind of the, 
that argument. Yeah. That's why he was he was never too sure. Uh anyway. Okay. God damn it. What are you gonna do with the man? Nothing. I watched another Well Twelve eh, episodes. Watch it. <laughs> uh, well we're definitely definitely going to do that. Yeah. Uh I think there's more than that, no? Uh maybe fourteen in this. Oh hang on. Oh let, let me have a look at my um uh, it... there's twenty five, apparently. twenty five? There you go. Well like one is no VA. Yeah, essentially no way. It'll it'll be um it adds on to after the events. Well, it's gonna be interesting anyway. Oh yeah. Uh it's getting interesting, man. Definitely gonna be interesting. Next episode uh, will be interesting. We're on to well, you've been listening to Who's That Anime, mm-hmm. a podcast. Yeah, we have. On anime. Uh, yep. Uh, is, well more so recently sometimes. than uh, than not. We've have... done it we've done a good job. Ever since our massive deviation to talk about envelopes and paper. I think we've we've tried to bring things back on track, and I'm proud of us. Um, back on track. But yeah, you can uh, you of it or already listening to us, but we can be found where all good podcasts can be found. Our home is at anchor.fm forward slash who's that anime. We can be listened to at Spotify, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, Overcast, Pocket Cast, and anywhere where an RSS feed can be used to listen to a podcast. We have a Facebook page, that's facebook.com forward slash who's that anime, there where we post when new episodes go live, the occasional anime meme, bits and pieces, fun stuff. Uh, we also have a YouTube account, uh, if you go to youtube.com and look for who's that anime, Colin has painstakingly been putting together the video parts of these podcasts, we do record these in part, like, mm-hmm. live <laughs> for each other. <laughs> for each other live, yeah. For you, yeah. pre-recorded. So we yeah. get all we, uh, the best. Yeah, we do a video recording of these as well as an audio, and Colin very graciously edits them together and releases them on YouTube. And you just mentioned, I think, at the start of this episode that we were up to. Uh, you just posted the words bubble up. The words bubble up like soda pop. Yeah, which was our palate cleanser yeah. in between Lane serial and... experiment and cowboy bebop. Cowboy bebop. Yeah, uh, we'll have a Pokemon as well in there. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Surprise, surprise Pokemon episode. So, well, yeah. And a Christmas episode. Oh, yeah, we have a Christmas episode too. It's crazy that I'm so, almost into 2022 now. With the. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be like June before you, you get the chance to put up the Christmas episode. <laughs> no, maybe not as late as that. But still. No, maybe. Because uh, next week I'll post one. Which I think is the first of me. First. Yep. And then two weeks I'll post the Pokemon episode after that. So that's the 15th. Mm-hmm. Then I'll probably do the school day season on 29th. Oh, wait. You're... But the you're missing two palate cleansers then. Wait, what? How? Because, well, we did... Well, not palate cleansers, but we did the Christmas special in the middle of Cowboy Bebop. We did, yeah. And we also did a palate cleanser of uh, Azamanga Dayo. Oh, yeah. That's got to go up. Oh, yeah, these things are going up. Uh, it's Before just... school days, though. Oh, well, I got these things out of order already, I think, to be honest. I was just kind of doing eh. season... We bonus episode in the middle of the month season bonus episode. It's all good. Uh, and then so June, I think I will get both from uh, the Christmas special in June as well. Then the possibly finish uh, signs get by then, so I can post it up in the six. And then um, the palette calendars. And then I'm not sure how we're going to post things. It's fine. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Uh, 
you also like to play games sometimes uh not so much recently but at twitch.tv forward slash couch fuel colin does sometimes play games and there's a good archive of that stuff at youtube.com if you look for the channel couch fuel yeah um similarly i sometimes play games at twitch.tv forward slash hail payment and you can find an archive of my stuff at youtube as well by looking for the channel hail payment yeah and that's where we are although i should say and i have forgotten to say if you would like to leave us a review for our podcast absolutely welcome five stars is always welcome and anything less with some constructive criticism is definitely welcome too um we don't make any money off of this there's no advertising we just enjoy talking about anime so if you wanted to tell a friend about a thing you enjoy that would get people involved in the conversation that would be awesome too yeah go on uh, go and do that we're all good we're here we'll be going on yep more in fact in two weeks three weeks potentially my new chair will be here oh so i'm very excited he's got a new chair that's right he's getting his uh um a Attack and Titans chair, isn't it? Yep. I don't like I say. I'm not even that fond of that show, but that chair, that chair is super nice. <laughs> it's like wearing the jackets. Yeah. Uh, only in a chair form, so you don't need to wear the jacket. You can just spin around. I oh. showed those jackets to my wife, and she was like, "Oh, they're quite cool." I was like, "Yeah, they are quite cool." <laughs> <laughs> and then. Did you get a matching pair? No, no, I, 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 I don't think a cropped jacket is for me. I'll be honest. Oh yeah, it is like up, what, to the belly button. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's definitely not, not a what, thing I should do. What you want is those things that will obviously uh, break your back when they accelerate you towards like any enemy. <laughs> the weird, the weird uh, grappling belt hook things. <laughs> The, the rocket propelled spine snapper yeah rocket propelled spine snapper like literally i don't know how they they have any way of like well, mentally like supporting themselves no it's like, it's like it oh is, there's my back that's whiplash it is ludicrous that they uh they use those because yeah it would just be immediate death immediate lip whiplash <laughs> <laughs> oh is that... I, and i genuinely think death I mean, the fact that they constantly use it, yeah, I imagine yeah. that your spine would be like, you know what? I didn't like it the first time. I definitely don't like it the second time. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't like it the first time, particularly since I could no longer use any of my limbs. But yeah, I'm just going... <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> flailing about, unable to control my limbs, firing my grappling hooks, my waist-mounted grappling hooks into the distance. Yep. <laughs> What a show. So real. So, so real. So realistic. I mean, like, you know, people transform into giant mutant uh, naked people. Those are those are kind of cool. I, I'm actually very much enjoying the, the trend that's happening right now where people will buy those, you know, the three the 360 cameras uh-huh. you get? Yeah. And they'll like put it in their mouth huh. and then just start running wildly. And, and because if you if you just try and display the 360 view of the camera in a vertical alignment, uh, it just looks like the ca- the things flailing like this from Attack on Titans. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. Okay. If you say so, man. If you say so. What a trend. It's good shit. Oh, Jesus. Good shit. Um, right, anyway, let's, I suppose we should probably end this. Yeah. Yeah, we better do it. Yeah, so this has been Who's That Anime uh, with your hosts Steve and Colin uh, getting deep into Steinsgate's lore. There was a evil demon face thing. I, d- I accidentally hit enter and uh, it used a react on Skype. <laughs> All right. I don't know. I didn't see it come up in the thing. Well, maybe you'll see that in the video format. Oh God! <laughs> I don't think I don't think you will. <laughs> anyway. Oh, I hope so. I hope you do. We'll see you next time. Same place, same time, same. <laughs>
<laughs> same anime place, same, same anime time. <laughs> yes, all the same. <laughs> anyway. Uh, beautiful. Yep. See you there, guys. Bye, folks. Bye. Bye.